guys who know me know I'm extremely close to Kyle. I look at that young man as my little brother, and I'm damn proud of it. I'm proud of what he's accomplished here today. Captain Zack alleged that he had oral sex with Nairo when Zack was 15 and Nairo was 20. Initially, Nairo deleted his social media presence, but decided to return to Twitter to issue an apology. As many of you know, I've been handling things legally in the last half year, and I want to announce now that we've reached a legal agreement. You know, thank you to my circle of friends who've stuck by me all this time. I just want to say thank you guys. I, I really appreciate you guys. I feel like this was the best kept secret oh, in the yeah. Smash community ever. And I just want to give a special shout out to like Twitch and Smash GG because oh, yeah. we couldn't have without them. Is it is it a global ban list? It's a global international ban list. Yes. Even if you put Nairo on the global ban list, to me it's not gonna matter. February 26, 2021, Unbanned Nairo reaches number one trending in the US on Twitter. Alpharad, Cosmos, Paradin, and Void claim to have seen a 30-page document that changes everything. No one else has seen it to date. A document begins to circulate in defense of Nairo. March 12, 2021, after an appeal, 2GG unbans Nairo from their events. March 15, 2021, after an appeal, Collision unbans Nairo from their events. When asked whether the 30 pages of evidence were used in this appeal, Collision refused to comment. 2GG has also yet to respond. Why was Nairo banned? Hi, I'm Detective Tech. I've been on this case longer than most. In fact, I've been on it so long that some might even call me an expert. If you want the long story, you can watch this video here. But for those of you joining us now, a 20-year-old Nairo, on the night of April 15, 2017, received oral sex from a 15-year-old Captain Zack. And once again, the following day, at a hotel for the tournament's CEO Dreamland. The circumstances of which are under heavy debate. That's because when the allegations first surfaced, Nairo hopped onto a call with Zack and put into place a lie that they had been planning for three years. It was only after Zack decided to recant and accuse Nairo of the deed outright that Nairo released his statement apologizing for his wrongdoings and disappointing his community, only to later claim he didn't even write that apology and through the power of therapy realized he was raped the first night before agreeing to it the second time because he was blackmailed. The eyewitness accounts, tweets, and photographic evidence showing the inappropriate behavior and dynamic between Zack and Nairo make it increasingly hard to believe he was entirely guilt-free in this scenario. I remember Zack tried saying something flirtatious with me, right? And I just pushed him away immediately. I said no, and I stopped that immediately, and that was that. Because I knew that was not okay, and I knew this just needed to stop. As the adult, it was my responsibility. Period. Not to mention his strongest defense has been purposefully hidden from the public eye and anyone with first-hand knowledge of it is incapable of discussing it because they had to sign an NDA. Now, one would think without an actual conclusion to this case, and the only thing that any of us know for certain is that he engaged in oral sex with a minor, the safest bet would be to just ban him until further notice or further evidence of his innocence came to light. The most common argument against banning Nairo isn't that he's not guilty of statutory rape. It's that he's already banned on Twitch, and because of Twitch's TOS, banned streamers aren't allowed to show up on other Twitch streams. Apparently his thing is Nairo's not banned right now on the global ban list, but Nairo does not plan to go to any tournaments, at least to our knowledge. And on top of that, even if he does go to a tournament, it's a huge risk for the tournament because he's banned on Twitch. It's incredibly dishonest because they've already banned people like Zero, who was retired from Smash competitive play, and is banned on Twitch. So clearly that explanation is bullshit. A lot of people have been making the joke recently about like how the Smash community like, you know, oh, we need to kick out Predators. But now like no one's saying that anymore because like it's not the hot topic or whatever because people didn't actually care. They just wanted to appear like they cared to look like they were the good guys without actually putting in any like good input. I don't really know what Technical's mission is right here. Even if you put Nairo on the global ban list, to me, it's not going to matter. Now, I don't know why I have to sit here and convince a bunch of fully grown adults why agreeing to have oral sex with a 15 year old is not okay, but here I am. I've tried everything from appealing to the systems that be with the Smash Global Band database. I even started my own counter trend. Hell, that got like two articles written on it. 
But none of that's worked though, so now we're gonna try something a little bit different. Before we get to the main course, my fellow gamers, there is one thing you need to understand. While Nairo is not banned in Smash in any capacity, as far as I'm aware, I was banned on a global level in 2020. Why was Detective Tech banned, you might ask? Did he fuck a kid? Did he sell drugs in the bathroom? Or was he just overall not a nice guy to be around, just a real piece of shit? Great question, all, all of those great questions. I'll be sure to answer that right after a word from today's sponsor. This video is brought to you by NordVPN. Have you ever gotten the sudden urge to wear a dress and break into places that have explicitly banned you? But you're tired of getting arrested and want a more safer and legal alternative? Well, I've got just the thing for you. NordVPN allows your IP address to cross-dress for you, so you can discreetly view region-locked content without having to juke all that pesky security detail. I'm not gonna lie, uh, Japan's Netflix catalog is like a thousand times better than the US, and it's uh, genuinely my favorite use of NordVPN. What's that? Anime is for nerds and weebs technicals. Not an anime fan, huh? Don't worry, because with the click of a button, you could be in any one of 59 countries with over 5,000 servers to choose from. So watch whatever you want, hater. It's no skin off my back. Still not wild enough for you, huh? Not getting your kicks? Not getting your weird cross-dressing kicks? Did you know you can also save money by using other countries' pricings? Look at this, check this. It says $5.89 a month. Bam, I'm in Sweden. 54 sec, what is, what the hell is sec? Swedish krona to USD. 54 krona is $4.85 a month. I just saved a dollar on a VPN subscription with a VPN. Now everything I buy will be in Krona. Here's the funny thing, you don't even have to do that. You can just get an exclusive NordVPN deal by going to nordvpn.com slash technicals. That's right, that's my name right there. Click that and get four extra months for free with Nord's to your plan. If that's not enough for you, they have a risk-free 30-day money-back guarantee. So if you don't like it, go ahead and get your money back. I dare you. They're not going to stop you. I'm definitely not going to stop you. And those cybersecurity guards definitely aren't going to stop you from getting all that juicy region lock content wherever you go. It helps you. It helps the channel. So don't forget to go down below and click that link to start your virtual cross-dressing journey today. And once again, thank you NordVPN for sponsoring this video. <laughs> Couldn't do this without you. To answer the question of why I was banned, we need to go all the way back to October 5th, 2018, when I first ran into the King of Slurs himself, Esam. What I'm about to show you is the clip that I have been told is the reason that I am a global threat and I'm not allowed at Smash events. If you're a fan of heart, pregnant, or a devout Christian, I urge you to click off the video now or skip to this timestamp. I'm the GOAT, I'm the GOAT. Huh, huh, huh. I'm the GOAT, I'm the GOAT, I'm the GOAT. Hey Tech, do you know where the vegetable oil is? Whoa, dude, what the Wait, fuck? Wait, what are you it's doing? It's in the kitchen, what, what the are fuck? you doing in here? No, what the hell is this? I'm a patron, I paid for this, man. No, what, no she's <laughs> Esam's girlfriend, what are you doing? It was only a dollar, the fucking... But, no, but... Wait, hold on. Hold yeah. on right there. Look. That's actually kind of nice, though. I'm saying. Hold on, bring, give me a chair. Hold on. Hey, can we see if MVD has a Patreon? Oh hell yeah! For anyone confused, I was not actually masturbating. Surprisingly enough, I didn't decide to just start beating my dick in my YouTube intro. That was a sketch, albeit an unfunny sketch, but a sketch nonetheless. Esam and Kokiri, the woman present in the sketch, knew about this video ever since 2018. Yet it only became a problem after Esam started losing thousands of dollars and going to therapy because I showed him saying slurs in old streams and forum posts. How do I know for a fact he saw it in 2018? Great question, dumbass. Well, I knew that for a fact because Alpharad, who was the content coordinator for Panda Global, I don't know if he still does that, but he was at the time, was reaching out to me and DMing me because he enjoyed my content and saw potential. You would never know that because he'd never throw a retweet in nigga's way, but he specifically told me he went over the points in my video with Esam on why his content sucked. 
Those DMs are on an old account, but here's Alpharad saying essentially the same thing on a different ESAM video I made and him explaining why he reached out to me in 2019. Keep in mind, this video came out before I even had 1,000 subscribers, and it only got 6,863 views after a year of being up. So any claims that this video initiated some massive fucking harassment campaign is just ridiculous. As I've already pointed out publicly, Kokiri knew that people masturbated to the lewd content that she sold. And when asked during the same time frame as this video from an anonymous follower if she cared if he actually masturbated to her, her response was, I sell lewds, this doesn't really come as a shock to me, LMAO. What the fuck is that? I feel like there would have been less controversy if I actually jerked off. It wouldn't have came as a shock to anyone. She even tried to flip it and say that even though she's the one selling lewds, that I'm too sexual and graphic, and then starts pearl clutching about me having a young audience. 49% of my audience is over 25 years old, and 2.5% is under 18. One of us has people jerking off to them, and unfortunately, it's not me. Kokiri can retroactively say I made her uncomfortable and get me put on a ban list for two years, but when I say Nairo lying about fucking a kid for three years makes me uncomfortable, I need to trust the tournament organizer's judgment. Well, let's look at his judgment, shall we? This is Cyrus Garakanian, or better known as CACT, the creator of the Smash Global Ban Database, or GBD for short, that cataloged and decided bans for the community from September 7, 2020 until its disbanding in August of 2022. He marketed it as a suggestion list and insisted that he himself did not have the power to just outright globally ban people because after all, it was just a database. So the list in and of itself doesn't ban anyone. I myself can't say that X person is banned from every event. All I can say is I recommend TOs and orcs to follow this list or you know use this as a reference when either accepting or denying players at their events. In the global ban database, there would often be hyperlinks to reasons why the person was banned. In the past, Cact has hyperlinked his own tweet banning the number two player in the world Sam Sora as the reasoning behind his inclusion to the global list. An actual reason for him being banned has not been provided to the public to this day. Additionally, he confirmed to me he had the power to do the same thing with Nairo. When I talked to you before, you defaulted mm -hmm. to the, the statements made by 2GG and Collision and told me I should take it up with them because they're the ones that unbanned him. Right. However, with Sam Sora, the source for his ban is literally just a tweet from you. Yes. So since you're a head TO, isn't it possible for you to just suggest a recommended global ban for Nairo? I can make a rec uh, make a tweet or a statement saying that, you know, I, I apply a recommended global ban on Nairo. I don't have all the documents and information regarding Nairo's case. I've never seen that document, and I wouldn't be comfortable making a decision unless I have access to that document. He clearly states in this list that he will not make any changes like he just did unless there is overwhelming and convincing evidence to the contrary of the initial reason why they were banned, which he still does not have to this day. So I don't- I don't have all the documents and information regarding Nairo's case. I don't know. I guess he was just inspired by the movement. <laughs> This is another example from a case we will look at soon of him completely understanding the power that he has, where he just flat out says, I can put him on the GBD like, yo, this dude kind of sus and keep him away from the rest of the scene, AKA majors and shit. VGBC has chosen to enforce the list at their events and also have other TOs and orgs in the community. Okay, so by proxy, every time you put a name on that list, you were essentially banning them from all of those events, right? More or less, yes. I am not at all exaggerating when I say Cact was the most powerful and influential figure in the Smash community when it came to banning people. And as you can probably imagine from it disbanding, a volunteer with the power to ban anyone in the world with very limited checks and balances doesn't end well. A prime example of this is the case of Ottawa Smash versus Val, which was one of the last cases ever handled by the GBD. 
Valve had contacted Cact in private regarding a complaint about the inaction of Ottawa Smash leadership in banning her ex Shao Kanye, who she believed abused her and another girl 13 years prior. After a quick brief of the situation, as stated previously, Cact offered to add his name to the GBD before clarifying that doing so will not actually ban him because it's more like a recommendation. Now this introduces a pretty interesting paradox. How is it possible that CACT adding someone to a global ban database isn't banning them? Take your time on that one, don't hurt yourself now. Yes, a majority of events follow it, but I do not ban him. Simply put him on the list. What is this, Nazi Germany? Sprechen Sie Deutsch, CACT? Someone's gotta keep the community safe, might as well be me. Hero complex aside, marketing this kind of supreme authority as just making recommendations is only one of the many ways that Cact avoided responsibility in his position. Going back to the Ottawa Smash case that they were dealing with, Ottawa Smash representatives were in opposition to Shao Kanye's ban, and they went to Cact with further information, which led to him being taken off the list for further investigation. I'm curious as to why he didn't have this information before making the decision, but as you read more and more of these messages, it starts to make a little more sense. Now, unfortunately for me, I do have to be objective and contact the dude like, hey, heard you're a fuckwad, can you explain yourself? AKA, get both sides of the story. I didn't know being objective was such a chore. One thing I noticed as a recurring issue is the overall lack of professionalism when talking to the parties involved. Like calling Val evil boob lady and ass witch is probably not in good taste after having just dealt with a case involving sexual abuse. When you are the leader of a conduct panel, you have to hold yourself to a higher standard to set an example for everyone else. Also start traveling so I can meet your old ass and not just be like, yeah, I'm friends with evil boob lady. Yeah, I'm not good enough to travel and play, but I will anyways, I could for work. We'll travel and spectate. I don't know. America pays whores well, LMAO. When I don't have to buy a $300 test to and from, I will absolutely. Hey, I got a fat ass and tits, what's up? Like, obviously I get your joking here, and I'm not trying to like, accuse you of some fucking egregious actions or some heinous misconduct, but you hardly know this woman. From one man in a position of power to another, just do not make a habit of talking to people like this, especially if they are someone you are working a case with. This is not a good idea. It's just, oh my god. Eventually, Val would take her grievances to Twitter and several threads detailing her concerns. This prompted Cac to post a twit longer responding to the various claims. In it, he asserted unresolved allegations of an ongoing police investigation, wrongly attributed actions to the Ottawa community rather than clarifying it, and when confronted with this misinformation, his response was, I had a gun to my head. This is the best way I was able to address her direct attacks towards me. I'm sorry, man not exactly in a great position. Instead of taking the time to accurately reflect the situation in his response, he prioritized saving his own ass over anything else. Shortly after, he'd post another twit longer announcing the disbanding of the GBD, citing his declining mental health due to dealing with various cases and the pressure that came with it. This is the kind of guy I had to look to to make an objective judgment call to ban Nairo until he sufficiently proved his innocence. Cact has never even seen the 30 page document that supposedly exonerates him. So realistically, he has no reason whatsoever to just believe Nairo when it's been shown that he's willing to lie. It's my strong belief that the public support for Nairo is a major factor in Cac's decision to not ban him. Because truthfully, just like in this case, he immediately caves to public pressure. And there's no way a guy that cares more about himself than his principles is going to go against the grain and actually make a decision that would matter. You'd think after years upon years of running events that people like VGBC and Summit could just get together and create some kind of basic disciplinary committee, right? Rather than relying on one guy whose only qualifications are creating Google Docs and running a fucking gaming tournament. And if he's not gonna ban Nairo, I guess we're gonna need another volunteer. So what am I gonna do about it? I talked a big game in the last video, and it's time to deliver. I recently visited a major Smash event in Las Vegas, and in doing so, I discovered the Smash community's greatest weakness, basic activism. 
That weekend, like any other, I entered as a spectator. Took photos with viewers, signed some stuff, and uh, one of the vendors even gave me some free shit, which was pretty cool. But I was quickly informed by the staff that my sign could not be seen on stream because it was too political. <laughs> it's too political. It's politics. That's It's the issue. So the first day wraps up pretty normally. The second day... Not much different. Until when I left, when I was notified by the official Double Down Twitter account that I would not be allowed back the final day because I was on the Global Band database. Everybody knew I was there for two entire days with no problem until people on Twitter started complaining about a picture of me. I actually spoke to CAC previously about this because I would get a ton of messages of people saying, well, aren't you banned in Las Vegas where you're from? I'm not banned in Las Vegas. So I got CAC to add a note next to my name on the list, even though it's stupid that I was still there, that says I was never banned in Las Vegas. So it's weird that I would be kicked out of a Las Vegas event, right? That's what I thought. But after they messaged me, CAC was too busy to deal with the situation and uh, help a nigga out. Out. And then when I asked him for clarification because there was never actually a reason for me to be banned He cited the old clip that I showed you guys earlier and said that that was an example of extreme targeted harassment I guess our definitions of extreme targeted harassment are, are pretty different I would have much rather had cact tell me to fuck off than try to placate me with all these bullshit excuses It would sound as if he's making up the shit as as he goes and he probably was to be fair. So it was at this moment I decided to take my trolling to the next level. After getting a full $50 refund, I borrowed my girlfriend's dress and her mom's bra and began planning my infiltration. All right, so I'm actually at the venue right now. This is my boyfriend, he's gonna help me infiltrate and we're going to crash grand finals. You don't have to be my boyfriend, just like fucking walk next to me. <laughs> it's, it's easier for me to get through. Yeah. Yo guys, so I successfully broke into the tournament. Uh, it was the easiest shit I've ever done. There's literally no security. If you look over there, not a single guard or anyone posted up. So yeah. I'm just waiting. I'm just waiting for grand finals and uh, we can get this started. Translator. Now, Min Min, kind of some of these characters that really operate well in the mid range, which is, in my opinion, where Leo is his strength. <laughs> the downer without the spike, and yeah. it's still enough, of course. We're gonna leave. Look, I done stayed this long. I'm definitely going to see who's going to win this tournament. Absolutely. He did, he did Dragon Arm first Leo. instead of Megawatt. Coming back, Proto charging it up. He has been a menace, just terrorizing Leo anytime that's he's it. off stage. But he says, you know what? Let me that's give it, you a break it. and tap that ass on stage. The pop off Kaboo, and he is your double down 2022. My biggest champion. fan. Look, it's my back biggest fan. And that young man is probably going to get scored. My biggest fan. This lady says you're not leaving. All right. What's your, what's your name? It doesn't really matter. Let's get these awards you know, started. I said that fucking kiss was wrong and I'm getting kicked out. I don't know what happened. Mission accomplished. Everyone's leaving anyways. We did it. We did that shit. After the stunt was complete, VGBC deleted the VOD for the entire day, and they uploaded the Grand Finals match 15 hours after every other match had been uploaded to their YouTube channel. That's because they were editing out every frame that you could visibly see the ban Nairo sign. While they were kicking me out, Gibber and Apostle, the brothers that co-own VGBC, stopped me for five minutes to argue why I was there. And... I think scold me. I tried to reach out to them after the fact to see if any of them wanted to clarify their responses in our conversation, but they ignored all of my messages. Lucky enough for you guys, I recorded the entire thing. Here is that conversation. Hey, it doesn't matter. Event. We, have the we right banned you from the event. event. Okay. We you I'm leaving. I'm banned anyways. What are you gonna do? Ban me again? You what you know just what you did, dude. You want to get called, a reaction? It's, called, it's like really lame. Man. It's called trespassing. Okay. You know that you're not allowed to do that. You can't pretend you're technology. Okay. It's not 
I mean, like, look what you did to get in here. There was no security when I walked in anyways. I look good. You don't understand how hard you throw this fucking event. You, 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 can't, you, can, you can say whatever Well, you I got banned after day two for no reason, so. You can say whatever you want, but the, the truth is, it's like, you're not going to get an immature reaction out of us. But you know you shouldn't be here. You know we have the right to tell you not to enter our event. Are you done? You have nothing to say for yourself. What, what do I need to say? Well, I mean, time is Nairo is less Nairo is less banned than me for making YouTube video jokes. Do you see how fucked that is? Do you see how weird that is? That dude had oral sex with a 15 year old. And you're using that list to enforce a ban. I get what you're saying. It's just bullshit. That Nairo is not banned. He's like actively restreaming your guys' tournaments and I know you're probably giving him the consent to do it. Like I've not heard one legit argument that makes sense for why someone who committed statutory rape should be allowed back in the queue. You're just making a bunch of unsubstantiated claims. How is it unsubstantiated? That's based off his statement. I'm talking about you're saying. Yeah, but you guys give him consent to restream your stuff, right? You're saying, you're saying we did Do you or do you not? You said we did that. Do you or do you not? Did you or did you not just say we did that? I'm not- Two sentences ago. I'm not accusing you, but are you giving him consent to restream your stuff? This is my problem. Are you giving him consent to restream your stuff? We don't, we don't. You don't talk to him at all? That's not like an arrangement? We're not a part of it. Me and Matt, we run our tournaments. Do the best we can. Well, not banning Nairo. Can you get the sign back? No, he took my sign. Oh, yeah, I was leaving. They All were right, talking well, to me. Alright. Now call me schizo if this starts getting into conspiracy territory, but I'm pretty sure they lied straight to my face when they told me they weren't giving Nairo consent to restream their events. But just to be certain, I reached out to the previous number one Smash player in the world, Zero, to ask him if it's an industry standard to ask for permission before restreaming events. To which he said, yes, and you'd probably be in trouble if you didn't. This is the same guy that would have you fill out a form every time you wanted to restream one of their events and state specifically what event and how long you watched it. He's also in the past stated that once Smash tournaments directly affect the government, US policy, and help decide who gets elected as president, I'll let people restream without permission. Unless the standards have changed in recent times, Nairo has, with permission, restreamed several VGBC events, invitationals, and majors, normally reaching over 10,000 viewers while doing so. But let's be fair, okay? Because I'm accusing them of this. Let's say they didn't give him consent. Okay, let's be fair. Fair trial here, all right? If a guy is sneaking into your house and shitting on your floor this much and you've done nothing to stop it, you might as well wipe his ass for him too. As far as YouTube goes, he can do it all he wants. He's not violating any laws here. My point here is that it's normally a requirement to ask for permission to restream their events. So they're either lying and giving him consent to restream their events or by doing and saying nothing about it, they're basically doing the same thing. I just think it's weird for them to try to hide that connection when all you have to look at is the lengths they went to to censor one sign for this specific content creator. So in conclusion, these corrupt bastards at the GBD refused to ban Nairo for having sex with a kid even though they had no evidence to prove his innocence. So at this time you don't think you'd make a statement to ban Nairo or anything? Um, at this time I don't think I'm gonna make that statement, no and VGBC lied about their relationship with Nairo, even though it's blatantly obvious. I don't care how much you hate Captain Zack and build him up to be this cartoonishly evil figure. I wrote the book on hating Captain Zack, but I'm not gonna sit here and pretend that in a case of sexual abuse between a 15-year-old and a 20-year-old, that the 15-year-old carries all of the accountability. Most responsible adults don't get tricked into having oral sex with a 15-year-old. And if they do, the least they should do is take accountability. Nairo went from covering it up for three years, lying when it came out, and then apologizing, to I had no choice, and I'm a victim. So here's what we're gonna do. 
I'm gonna show up to major Smash events at random in various disguises and get Ban Nairo on stream until an official statement is drafted banning him from the community. So when you're at an event, Gimmer, and you're looking out at the crowd and all your attendees, just remember, every black guy and every black woman could be me, waiting for my chance to strike. Am I lying just to get you to racially profile your attendees? Maybe. Keep your head on a swivel. Hell, I might even pay some guys on Fiverr to do it. You can pay people to do anything these days. If you're sick and tired of shit like this and want to help, all it takes is a piece of paper and a Sharpie. You think IBDW's anti-pop off is crazy? You can Tiananmen Square the whole reaction just by putting Ban Nairo on the screen. Just roll up the sign and hide it in your pants or some shit. What are they gonna do, pat you down? There was literally no security when I did this. I, I wanna make that very clear. I waltzed into that place. If you don't wanna be cliche and use a sign like everyone else, I get it, I get it. But you still wanna let your voice be heard. I have an entire line of Ban Nairo apparel that you can hide under your jacket until that special moment. Luke we got shirts, we got mugs, and for the sneakier fellas, we Luke got stickers. I'm selling this Ban Nairo shirt and the sticker at zero profit. I'm making no money off of this, just so I can sell it as cheap as possible. I put like no effort into it, so if I did make a profit, I would feel really bad. <laughs> If you want a shirt that has the text on it, you could just fucking print your own. I don't care, I'm not making money off of it. Because as a great man once said, it's not about the money, it's about sending a message. If you're one of those rare technicals viewers who's a pussy, I know, it happens, uh, and you're afraid that you'll get banned for wrong think, just grab a friend who doesn't play Smash to do it for you, he won't give a fuck. There's so many ways you could pull this off, there's so little security, there's- No one's gonna stop you, no one's gonna stop you Who from doing this. Me? You'll be famous for doing this, everyone will love you, you'll also get a ton of pussy. If you're not into activism, but you still want something to commemorate this special moment in Smash history, you could pick up the biggest fan tee, or strut your stuff in the statutory swag hoodie that also comes in a t-shirt or a long shirt. Long shirt? What am I, a fucking dumbass? <laughs> this is only the start, Gimmer, and I can guarantee you I will continue to fuck with you and the rest of the Smash community in exceedingly funny ways until you fix it. He can't go anyways, right? He doesn't even want to go. So what's the holdup? If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe for more content three months from now. And if you really enjoyed the content, maybe consider supporting me over on Patreon. I genuinely would not be able to focus on these massive projects if it weren't for all the patrons, so I really appreciate you guys. Uh, you guys are the lifeblood of the channel. And again, another big thanks to NordVPN for sponsoring this video. It really means a lot. Thank you guys uh, for the help there. Don't forget to click that link down below. But yeah, eagerly awaiting that response from you guys. Whatever you decide to do, just let me know soon so I can start booking my flights. Um, yeah, that's it. Until next time. My biggest fan! Look, it's my biggest fan! We was down and we had nothing, we had to share a meal. We put the shit in overdrive with no steering wheel. Shorty throw that.